Any ideas on choosing to start an infinite banking policy versus a velocity banking versus a velocity banking my mortgage balance? Mortgage balance is at 180,000, 3.6%, cash flow is just over 2,000 a month. Just turned 29 years old. We're we're going to deal with William uh, and that'll be it. I'll close it out here because we're approaching two hours, right? So William's in a dilemma. So we got William, male, 29 years old, okay? And he's got the mortgage, right? He's got 180,000 owed. 3.6%, uh, and his cash flow is a little over 2,000 a month. So I'm assuming his income is pretty good, right? And if you want, William, you can give us some more data. Four major numbers, interest rates, monthly payment on the mortgage. Go ahead, dump us, give us some more value so that we can uh, you know, close out strong for for 2020, looking into 2021, you guys know what I want uh, to focus on. You guys know where I'm going. You can watch the replay, catch this again, so you guys can make your decision. So there's there's two mindsets, William. Mindset A is debt payoff, right? So if if I've come to the conclusion. If William says, Denzel, paying off debt is going to make me happy. It's going to make the wife happy, the girlfriend happy, whomever. It's going to reduce stress beyond measure. Then I need to focus on what is the fastest way to pay off debt. Now, mathematically, no matter which way you look at it, I don't care what insurance agent you talk to. No matter what. The minute you start a... Uh, IBC policy, right, and a, a high cash value life insurance policy, any type of permanent life insurance policy, whether it's a whole life or an IUL, no matter how it's designed, no matter what insurance company you go with, the very first few years, okay, the first few years, you are negative, 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 negative. So that means if you put in 20 grand, you're going to have less than 20 grand the first year. In the second year, if you put in another 20 grand, you're going to have less than 40 grand the second year. The third year, you put in another 20 grand, you're going to have less than 60. The fourth year, you put in 20 grand, you might break even by the fourth year. But in many cases, it takes between the fifth, sixth, and seventh year to break even early on a life insurance policy. Just to break even, my friend. Just to break even. That means by the fifth year, you're actually making a return, a positive net internal rate of return. And depending on how it's designed, it can be as early as four or five years break even or as late as nine to 12 to 13 years. Okay. So you have to put that into perspective in terms of what's my focus. If I want to pay off debt extremely fast, this is probably not the best fit for me right away. Okay. So if you're at that conclusion, option A, I want to pay off debt extremely, extremely fast. I want to look at debt snowball as my benchmark, as my measuring stick. And then I want to evaluate the velocity banking concept. Okay. And I want to match the two. Right. And then the alternative. Right. So mindset B is 10x. Okay. So these are my options. I either do debt snowball, velocity banking, if debt payoff is my major focus, 
if that's not my major focus, option B is 10x, right? Which is multiplication of money, bringing value to the marketplace, increasing my worth as a kingdom citizen, right? Just increasing value in the marketplace as a human being, ethical business human being. And then I can say, okay, maybe I'm, maybe I'm willing to look into this IBC because I could probably do some 10x moves with that product. But understand, option B says, if I'm going to 10x, debt is no longer a concern. He owes 180K at 3.6% and he has over 2,000 a month in cash flow. The average American is lucky if they cash flow roughly four or 500 bucks a month. So he's above the average American household in terms of cash flow per month. The debt is not killing him financially. It's not killing him. He's managing it and he still cash flows a nice amount of money each and every month. 2,000 times 12, that's 24,000 a year. What if he took that 24K a year and dumped it in real estate? What if he took that 24K a year, started his own business, creating content, talking about cryptocurrency? He's 29 years old. I can guarantee you by the time he's a full adult, grown male father, 40, 50 years old, I promise you, he'll be conducting transactions via crypto, more than likely. So what if he started a business around that that catered to the future environment that he could potentially be in? Or what if he took this 24K and where he's currently working at, what if he dedicated more time to get a promotion, to get a raise, to increase value in that company, and maybe he takes that 24K, invests back into himself to either start at some type of business some type of investment or bring uh, or get a, a, a raise or bonus. Does that make sense, William? Right? Uh, and he just gave us some more value here. He said income's at 5,200 a month. So he's living effectively. If he's only making 52 and cash flowing over 2K, he's living effectively, I would say. Expenses $3,000, right? Majority of that 3,000 is the, is the mortgage. And then he's got you know, total 240K in debt. He's got 40K on the student loans, right? Whatever interest rate. And um, let's see, I lost my train of thought. 40K on the student loans, 100K on the mortgage. So these are your two options, William. Either A, Denzel, love the whole 10X. I think IBC is cool, just maybe not be ready for it. Um, you, know, maybe, you know, maybe I'll do real estate investing or start my own business later down the road. I think personally, I would just like to knock down some of my debt, get it under control. If, if you feel like this is a lot, right? You just wanna knock it down, get it under control, great. Let's just do debt snowball as our measuring stick, match it up against velocity banking, maybe join the manifesto, that's the focus of the core program anyway, it is velocity banking, and knock down the debt. And then maybe one to two years from now, you got the mortgage down to 100K and you're like, know what, Denzel, oh man, paying off debt that makes absolutely no sense at this point. I would like to switch my mindset to 10X, I'd like to start an infinite banking policy, change the way I transact business, focus on increasing cash flow rather than net worth, and create financial freedom in, a, in, a, in about a five to seven year time frame. So by the time I reach 40, I'm financially free, financially independent. I went from making 5K a month to roughly 50K a month, and I never looked back, okay? So that's a different way of looking at your finances. Up to what age can I buy a life insurance policy? I'm 69 years old. 69 is pretty up there in age when it comes to life insurance. Um, I think the oldest individual that I uh, worked with, they are, I think, 72 or 71, or I think they were, it was a woman at 69. She did put a policy in place. Depending on your age, health, and finances, right? Those are the main things, Wanda. Okay, so Wanda, I'm not going to erase the board because I'm going to close it out here. Wanda, it's age, health, 
if you're a super healthy 69 year old woman, you might get a better rate than some 40 year old woman or 30 year old woman that's overweight, smokes cigarettes, right? So it's really, it's, it's not, um, the age is not always as important as the health, okay? And then the last thing is finances. You can only get so much life insurance based on your finances. So Wanda, if you only make 60,000 a year, don't expect to get a $1 million policy, right? It's not gonna happen, okay? So I just wanna kinda put that into perspective. Now, if you make 600,000 a year, Wanda, based on your finances, you can get a nice large, you can get a nice size policy, which is gonna help the cost because it's bigger. And if your health isn't perfect, like if you're like, if you're operating like a 40 year old woman, shoot, uh, getting life insurance is not going to be an issue. So these are the three major factors, age, health, and finance. And the older you are, yes, it is more expensive, but if I'm really healthy, the only difference is the amount of death benefit that they'll approve me for. So guys, if I'm in great health and I'm 69 years old, in comparison to a 40 year old, we put in the same amount of money, right? So let's say Wanda's 69 and Susan is 40, right? Susan smokes cigarettes, right? Doesn't wanna quit, has been smoking for 25 years. Ridiculous, right? Bad, overweight, everything. She gets a poor rating, okay? But Wanda is 69, operating like a 40 year old, super healthy, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink uh, the major stuff, doesn't have any underlying health issues. I mean, the woman's in phenomenal shape, okay? Let's just say that's the case. And um, they're, they both wanna put in, say, 40K a year, okay? I promise you, even though she's 29 years older than Susan, her policy is going to perform better internally, right? Because this one got a poor rating, but Wanda got preferred. So the only difference is the amount of death benefit that the insurance company is willing to give Wanda. Maybe, maybe, maybe they might give more to Susan, but because she has poor rating, poor health and whatnot, they might give her the same amount of death benefit as Wanda, okay? Everything boils down to age, health, and finances, okay? Hope that is uh, very, very helpful uh, for you, Wanda, in making your overall decision in getting a life insurance policy. Now, on the other note, regardless of all that data, again, if you're 69 years old and you don't have a business, you don't have a lot of cash flow coming in, I would rather you focus the next five to seven years in 10Xing your income and then establishing a trust, a will, power of attorney, a team, so that you can pass on the cash flow to your heirs, right? That might be way more effective. And then in terms of getting life insurance, you could just put it on the people in your family that you trust that are younger and healthier than you but you remain in control of the cash value, right? You remain in control of the cash value, and when you die, they'll take care of you via the cash value, okay?